Welcome to the virtual worship service of the Willow Street United Church of Christ for this, the third Sunday of the Easter season. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome to walk with us in worship during these very trying times. Our purpose with these videos is to provide a worship experience for you in your home or wherever you might be during this time of social distancing due to the concerns of the COVID-19 virus. While we may not be able to gather as a congregation, we can nonetheless worship together through this virtual means. And if you're able, I invite you to also join us on the Sunday morning live stream, time of reflection, connection, and prayer. I call it, Shall We Gather? And you are invited to join us for that on YouTube. Once you get to the Willow Street Church channel on YouTube, and please know that is Willow Street, Pennsylvania, not California. If you would, under any of the videos that you would click upon, click upon the red subscribe button that's underneath and to the right of all videos. Then what will appear is a small bell icon to the right of that. If you then click that, you will receive a notification anytime we upload a new video such as this one or we go live. Again, thank you for joining us in this service. Let us be called to worship the living Christ. Savior Jesus Christ. We thought he was dead, but he is risen from the dead and lives evermore. Let us bow down and worship him. Let us bring our praises and joyful hearts to our Lord. and healed our souls. We love the Lord who lives and reigns with God. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, come and speak to our hearts this day. May we, like those on the Emmaus Road, find your words burning with hope in our lives. Strengthen us and give us courage for the journey ahead. For we pray in the living Christ's name. Amen.
Peter preached, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Repent so your sins may be forgiven. We participate in society's alienation from God. We have joined the me generation in putting our own interests before all else. We have much to confess before we can claim the wholeness God offers us. Please allow me to lead you in this prayer of confession. Lord, you were so patient with us. You brought us through Easter when we rejoiced at the news of the resurrection of your Son, our Savior. You were with us in the upper room when we remained hidden out of our fears, sharing with Thomas our doubts and anxieties. Now you come to us on the road. You come to us in our everyday lives, moving out of a setting of worship into the work and play world. But we aren't always ready for you and don't always see you or feel your presence. We let so many things crowd in our lives and those intrusions blot out our awareness of your presence. Forgive us our blindness and our stubbornness. Help us to keep our hearts open to you, to see and tell the good things that you have done in our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Even though you have not seen Jesus one-on-one, -on -one, you have assurance of his presence and his love with you. The promise of promises of God are always true. God is with us in the resurrection of Jesus, in our journeys, in our lives. Praise be to God. Amen. chapter 24, verses 13 through 36. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who was unaware of the things that have taken place over the last few days? He said to them, what things? They said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago. But there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people! Your dull minds keep you from believing that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things? and then enter into his glory. Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself and all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going on ahead. 
but they urged him saying, stay with us. It's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So we went in to stay with them. After he took a seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road and when he explained the scriptures to us? They got up right then and returned to Jerusalem. They found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, the Lord really has risen. He appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us thank God. Amen. A Sunday school teacher was concerned that his young students might be a little confused about Jesus. So he asked his class one Sunday morning, where is Jesus today? Stephen raises his hand and he says, he's in heaven. Mary answered, he's in my heart. Little Johnny waves his hand furiously from the back row and blurts out, he's in our bathroom. The surprised teacher asks little Johnny how he knows this. Well, little Johnny says, every morning my father gets up, bangs on the bathroom door and yells, Jesus Christ, are you still in there? Emmanuel, God with us. I love this imagery applied to Jesus the Christ. God with us. With us in all times, in all seasons. We cannot go where God is not. Regardless of what we are facing, regardless of where we are or what we are doing, God is with us. Emmanuel. Of course, we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us during Advent and Christmas, but the truth is we should celebrate this truth every day. God is with us. Say that with me right now. God is with us. Do you really believe that God is with you? You just said it, at least in your mind, if not with your voice. On some levels, of course, this question is rhetorical. I don't want you to raise your hands, but do you really believe that Jesus is with you? How do you know? How do we recognize the presence of Christ in our lives? How do we recognize Christ in the midst of a pandemic, among the drastic changes, the interruptions really, to our way of life that's been brought on by this disease? How will we recognize Christ in whatever new normal that will be our future from this pandemic? We need Jesus with us. That is true. We need a true companion with us. Consider for a moment the word companion. Have you ever thought about its origin? It's actually from two Latin words, com and panis. Com in Latin means with or in common with, thus the word common in English. And panis, well, do any of you old Latin scholars remember panis? What about you Spanish speakers? Pan, bread. Companion simply means with bread. Hold that thought. Two friends, companions, walking on the road to Emmaus. This morning's scripture from the end of Luke's gospel is usually reserved for some Sunday after Easter when we are all excited about the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus the Christ. Most of the time, the study of these appearances is to convince ourselves of the truth of resurrection of Jesus from the dead. But today, I want us to consider another truth in the story, beyond that of the newly resurrected Christ. I mean, after all, we are over 2,000 or around 2,000 years post-resurrection. 
And if we are not convinced as of yet of the power of God to raise even the dead to new life, then there's no hope for us being convinced of that by simply another Easter celebration. I'm not being skeptical, but in the words of my Southern brothers and sisters, I'm just saying. The story from Luke 24 is the story of two friends running back to Emmaus. Three days before this, the disciples had gathered in the upper room with Jesus to celebrate the Passover. Late that night, Jesus was arrested. He was tried overnight. The next day, Friday, he was executed. Then, just this morning, in Luke's account, just this morning, Reports of strange happenings, unbelievably strange happenings, extraordinary, shocking things even. His body was missing. Reports of some strange visions of white, dazzling, white-clothed, angelic-type figures at the tomb. Words of resurrection from the dead. It was all too much to believe, let alone understand. And now, on a Sunday afternoon, just before Jesus appeared to those in the upper room, we find the story on the road to Emmaus. Two friends on the road to Emmaus. They had traveled to Jerusalem for what should have been a happy occasion, the celebration of Passover. I hope you heard the should have been in that previous sentence. They had their ideals about what Passover should be like, just as we had our ideals about how we celebrate Easter, both as a church and as a family. Well, Passover that year was anything but happy, just as Easter this year was anything but ordinary. As they traveled along and talked and discussed, the two companions were sad disappointed, full of guilt, fear, and grief. They were confused. Where was Emmanuel, God, with us now? They were going to Emmaus. Which, my friends, is a bit of an interesting dilemma. You see, no one knows for sure exactly where Emmaus was geographically. And that, in and of itself, may be part of the message of the story to us this Easter season. Preacher, teacher, and writer Frederick Buechner interprets Emmaus this way. Here are his words. Emmaus is the place where we go in order to escape. A bar, a movie, Wherever it is, we throw up our hands and say, let the whole damn thing go hang. It makes no difference anyway. Emmaus may be buying a new suit or a new car or smoking more cigarettes than you really want or reading a second-rate novel or even writing one. Emmaus may be going to church on Sunday. Emmaus is whatever we do, wherever we go, to make ourselves forget that the whole world holds nothing sacred, that even the wisest and the bravest and loveliest decay and die, that even the noblest ideas that men have had, ideas about love and freedom and justice, have always in time been twisted out of shape by selfish men for selfish ends. You see, we all have our Emmauses emotionally and spiritually. Emmaus is a place where we go to get away from it all. It is a place where we travel when the pain is just too great, where the grief is just too hard to bear, where the loneliness is just too quiet to stand anymore. Emmaus is our escape. The place where you go when you're running away from home. For some, Emmaus is in the bottle, the abuse of alcohol or drugs. For some, Emmaus is emotional withdrawal from friends and family. For some, it is found in unfaithfulness to marriage vows and illicit sexual relationships. For some, it's in abuse of friends and spouses and even children. For others, Emmaus is overcommitment, overcommitment to the church, overcommitment to our jobs, overcommitment to thrill seeking or to play or even overcommitment to food. 
Being under a stay-at-home order has been difficult for many of us because we have had to find new Emmauses. Eating out at restaurants, going to pubs, going to shopping centers, going to game rooms, going to the gym, all of that has been shut down. Two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And their story tells us that regardless of where and what our Emmauses are, Regardless of where we try to run and hide, irrespective of how healthy and good our escape mechanisms are or how damning and destructive they are, regardless of what and where, we do not go there alone. Indeed, even on the road to Emmaus, we might encounter the living Christ. I dare say even isolated in our own homes, we can encounter the living Christ. As the disciples made their way that day to Emmaus, a stranger joined them on the road. What were you discussing with each other while you walk along? The stranger asked. I believe their responses were rather sarcastic and their pain was evident in their sarcasm. <laughs> Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there? Are you so out of touch with reality that you don't recognize what is happening? What things, the stranger Jesus asked, leading them further in conversation. The two began to lay out the pain of their hearts, layer upon layer, very much like an onion. One began, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and lay leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Not to be outdone, the companion jumped in. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. The intensity, as well as the volume, goes up as Cleopas jumps in again. Yes, and some women from our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. The two recounted the history. They look to the past for relief from their pain. They needed not the past, but a companion, a living Christ, the bread of the world in their lives. But they didn't find Christ in their past and even in its retelling. And they didn't recognize the cross, the Christ walking, walking along with them on the road, the very bread of life walking with them. And they failed to recognize him. How do you recognize Jesus even when you know he's with you? Well, hearing their pain, their pain born in unbelief, the stranger began to teach them all the things about Christ. <laughs> the same thing he'd been trying to teach them for the past three years. They marveled at his words. But get this, even the gospel, the good news, did not relieve their pain. Even the Bible, the very story of Jesus failed to give them an experience with the living God. Now, the three travelers, including the stranger, arrived at the entrance of the city and the stranger Christ began to walk on. These disciples invited the stranger to stay with them, to eat with them. And so they sat down to dinner. It was then the until now unknown guest took bread and when he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them. Companion with bread, Jesus revealed himself as their true companion. True companion to the two distraught disciples. The living bread with them and companion with bread. The three rejoiced in their experience of God's presence. Just as shared meals are important to our emotional health, so is the common meal 
of communion important to our spiritual health. It is at the table of Holy Communion that we often unexpectedly experience the real presence of Christ. It is at the table of Holy Communion that our companion can be so clearly revealed to us. Now, I know we've had a couple of virtual communions during this pandemic. And yes, I certainly experienced Jesus' presence with us as we celebrated companion, Holy Communion. And I pray that as you experienced it with us, that you did as well. But still, it's not the same as being together as God's family around the table for communion, is it? Next Sunday or whenever you watch next week's for May 3rd's virtual worship service, we will celebrate virtual Holy Communion again. And I want to tell you that now so that you can prepare something to use for bread and something to use for cup so that wherever you are, you can worship companion with us. But I confess, at least for me, something is missing when we celebrate virtual communion. And I know what it is. That something is actually many somethings. It's you, my church family. And I can hardly wait till that time when we can gather again safely and in whatever form it may take in the future, whatever it may look like. But when we can gather again and celebrate worship together in communion and what a celebration that will be. In the meantime, might I offer a recommendation of a couple of things for you to do and for me during our quarantine. It is my belief, as well as my experience, that we are best able to recognize the true companion, Christ, when we are prepared spiritually to recognize Christ. Oh, oh yeah, God can and God does break in unexpectedly, as he did with these two walking on the road to Emmaus. However, we are best able to recognize Christ's presence with us when we are spiritually prepared to do so. So first, read today's passage of scripture several times in the coming days for this next week. It's Luke 24, begins in verse 13. Don't need to really remember that. Just remember Luke 24. And as you do, don't just read the words. Read slowly, sentence by sentence, and reflect, meditate upon what you read. Look for Jesus in these words of the text. And allow God, through your meditation and contemplation, to speak to you. Second, consider the statement of Luke 24, verse 16. But they were kept from recognizing him. Spend some time each day this week allowing God to show you what it is that is in your heart and life that is keeping you from recognizing Jesus' presence with you. What can you do, or more importantly, what can you allow God to do in your life to better prepare you to recognize the Christ who walks with you every step of your faith journey? Third, be intentional about looking for Jesus in your day-to-day -day living, in your reading, in your thinking, in your interactions with others in whatever form they may take. Look for the presence of Christ and reflect upon the ways Jesus will reveal himself to you. And finally, keep a journal. Just write it down. It could be just on a piece of scrap paper. It doesn't matter. Write down the ways that you experience Jesus in the next few week, days, at least this next week. And then, if you are able to join us on the live stream of May 3rd, next Sunday, I invite you to share one or two of your experiences with us who are gathered in that way virtually. My friends, remember this, whoever you are and wherever you are on your faith journey, the Christ, our living companion, is with you. How will you experience God today? Reflect on this, for every day is indeed Easter Day. When Thomas touched the wounds and set himself free, it was Easter day. When Peter's three yeses to Jesus finished his three denials, 
It was Easter Day. When Mary, ready to embalm the dead, ran in fear from the empty tomb. It was Easter Day. When the disciples looked from afar at a breakfast of fish on the beach. It was Easter Day. When Emmaus became synonymous with welcome and the breaking of bread with strangers. It was Easter Day. When Paul was blinded by the light and recognized his voice niggling in his head. It was Easter Day. When the hungry are fed at table, the same table as the rich. It is Easter Day. When weapons are beaten to plowshares and peace is a word to be shouted. It is Easter Day. When the stranger is welcomed in community and the lonely are restored in relationship. It is Easter Day. keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>